dude. Hey guys, what is up? It is Biff from Fearless Mods, and today we are going to turn the STI blue, inside and out. A full color change. You've been staying with us this far. It's been several episodes, and this is the one. So we're getting an early start. We're going to do some finish taping on it and put the paint booth together, and then we're going to be ready to lay down some blue and some clear coat. Kind of tape along the, uh, the rubber line, which sucks. I hate this look. I've always hated this look. That is a pain in the butt because the the uh, the way that rubber has dips down in and just comes up with just a little flange gives you nothing to tape to. And one of my peeves with paint jobs has always been the paint that you see on the rubber seals. I absolutely hate that. I'm going to have little spots here and there, very minuscule, but uh, but they're going to be there, and that's frustrating. But I can't I can't get it to hardly even stick on the edge. And what I would like less than having paint on the rubber is having no paint on the metal next to it. That would be horrible. So I'm just kind of defaulting to, I might have to have a little bit of paint on some of the rubber here and there. It's kind of a humid morning uh, this morning, as it normally is in the morning before it warms up and I'm seeing a bunch of little bugs in here. I'm gonna go outside and start setting up the uh, paint booth and then we'll uh, come back in here and get the fan turned on and start sucking the air out of here. All right guys, this is it. Your compressor's running, paint booth's set up. I'm gonna turn it on, start clearing it out. And it's time to uh, start with the wax and grease remover and then prime the silver parts. All right, starting off with the wax and grease remover. First round of degreasing is done. I'm going to do another round of degreasing. I had to uh, get some uh, of the residual glue there from the wrap off of those pillars. Um, so that took a little bit of dry sanding and some lacquer thinner, um, but it's all good to go now. So one more round of degreasing and then I'll be on to tack cloth. Okay, not that I have earned the, earned the right to be able to give any probe tips. Uh, or anything like that because I'm certainly not a pro but I'll tell you a couple things I've uh, learned over the course of these couple of weeks here. These gloves start to get a little bit sometimes like I don't know like oily sticky it's weird looking but I've noticed after I've been degreasing and stuff like that if I touch the uh, the surface I can see like my rubber glove fingerprint on the surface uh, and it's like an oily looking little print. So it's probably just, you know, maybe the chemicals after a while just kind of start to break down the, the uh, rubber. Um, so that's one pro tip. The other thing is I'm getting ready to tack cloth. So I've, I've degreased it twice. Uh, I'm getting ready to tack cloth. And I never used to know what a tack cloth was. But uh, so you wouldn't think this would do much, but it's like impregnated with some kind of I mean, it feels sticky. It's like a, a cheesecloth, but it feels sticky. Um, so, and it's got, it's real thin. You can open it wide up, flip it over a, a bunch of times, but it's designed to trap any particles, uh, you know, off of the car when you wipe it down. So the last part of the pro tip is, like I say, with the gloves, whether you're degreasing or tack clothing, the key is to try not to let your gloves touch because I, at this phase, if my gloves touch, what I'm gonna to need to do is go back with the degreaser to remove that fingerprint before I can then go ahead and tack cloth. So right now I'm moving on to tack clothing. So it actually appears to be whatever the stuff is in the tack cloth it tends to make your fingers look a little bit oily and then when you touch, you'll leave the fingerprint. I just did one, I'm gonna clean it up. I think that's it. It's time to make her blue. First, I'm gonna go around and prime. Anything that's not red or black is getting primed. It's time to mix some paint. Hey man, if you could take my heart rate right now, it would be up there. Here we go, and it all starts with the roof. Woo! All right, guys, here we go.
All right, let's go with coat number two. Here's the truth of it. I just made my last full cup and I've still got two doors of trunk to go on the second coat, which means my third coat is not going to cover the entire car. So I got to make this one count on the black areas because that might be all they get. And then the third coat will definitely go on the areas that were red and silver um, and anywhere where I did a patch repair so that there's nothing showing through. Uh, it's the reality of the situation, it's what I got to go with. And I've got most of the second coat, or I'm sorry, most of the third coat on there. So uh, I'm going to mix up the last of it and hit that door and the roof. And that should be, that should be it. I'll look for any spots I need to hit before I run out. Um, for any of the repairs, but it should be good to go. Last of the blue. Ooh, it's not much. It's about five and a half ounces. What I wouldn't do for two more double shots of Lapis Blue Pearl. Get every drop. Well, we can reduce it a little further and see how far it'll go depending on how much producer we have. We don't have much more of that. One to one, so one gallon and one gallon is coming up to be pretty dead on. So I guess my mixing has been pretty good. <laughs> About five and a half ounces. That's crazy. And uh, now we're looking closer to eight. I'm gonna use every bit of that. Every bit of that. Push it all down around my funnel to get every bit of that paint. All right, so I got about 13 ounces left. That should be plenty, actually, to do the roof and the door and any other spot repairs I need to look at. I think our coverage is pretty good on the three coats. The hood looks fantastic. The trunk's got three coats. It should be good to go also. Um, so let's get this in the gun and see what we can do. So we're gonna call it gun cleaning time and uh, to get ready for clear coat, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and clean the gun and save about the ounce and a half or two ounces, whatever I have left uh, for a rainy day. But uh, looking pretty good, looking pretty good, pretty happy with it. Okay, so uh, I thought it was doing pretty good in here cleanliness wise and it does look pretty good. There's a couple little things in the paint, but I'm starting to see a couple little bugs in here as the humidity's probably coming up or the heat's coming up outside. So I'm gonna kill the ones I see and then uh, keep some tape nearby doubled up on itself so that I can pick them out of the paint and then keep wetting it down if I need. Clear coat's mixed. Starting to run out of it too. After this, I have one more quart plus, uh, let's see, plus a half pint of activator. So a quart and an eighth, apparently. Because this thing keeps draining on me when I tip it up, when it's full, is I'm not gonna do the roof first, uh, but I'm also not gonna do the hood because I gotta reach way over it. I'm gonna start with the trunk and, uh, and get that, and then maybe come up to the roof after I've taken a little bit off the top. I also didn't fill it completely full but it is, it is still pretty full, uh, and I don't want it to drip. So I am going to get a rag, um, but I'm also going to go ahead and start on the trunk. So we're going to finish up the first coat of uh, clear on the left side and then start putting down the second coat. Let's do this clear coat number two business. Well, one more 
canister of clear. So uh, I got to go back and review the footage and see what I've cleared and how many times. Okay, so after further review, the call on the field stands. What I have two coats on is the roof, the hood, and this fender, and the tops of the doors. So I got the bottom, I got it, that fender, and the bottoms of both doors all the way back, and the, uh, the deck for a second coat, and we'll be good to go. This is all looking fantastic. The top and the hood look beautiful. So on to those components with the last bit of clear, and then we'll be done. Seven and a half ounces of uh, activated clear coat and it just gets poured out because it's activated, it won't keep. And I don't want to just spray it and use it, so we're getting rid of it. This looks great, guys. Sorry I gotta give you the tour with the uh, respirator on, but that's just the way it goes. Um, it's still doing its self-leveling, um, but it's looking fantastic. There's some, you'll see some misted areas that will uh, all get buffed at a later date. But for the most part, it's hard. The thing I've found is it's hard to get it evenly coated without misting another spot that you visited earlier. But uh, coolers are looking good. Glad we got that glue off of there. The uh, body colored uh, doors look fantastic without the black wrap up there around them. Just gorgeous. Mm. Back end looks great, ready for its wing. And the silver quarter panel is no longer silver. I'm going to go inside and let it dry and breathe normally for a little while. Um, and just let the booth continue to evacuate the air. I'm going to clean the gun. Uh, I was holding on to the last of the clear coat for a minute just to see. But there's uh, nothing I can think of. I got this other door handle done here. And it's coated, so yeah, it is good to go as well. So no need for the last of the clear coat. I'm gonna pour it out and we are done painting. After all of that, after all those supplies and all those materials and all that work, all I have left is right here. I've got a little bit of um, sealer, about half a quarter sealer. I've got just a few ounces of my paint that's already reduced. I've got just an ounce of the nascent activator and you know my body filler and stuff like that and other supplies, some of the sprays and stuff, but but <laughs> all that, the, the freaking reducer, the nascent, the two quarts of paint that were added to my big quart of paint, everything just all trashed. I'm almost, I've almost used a whole gallon of lacquer thinner as well, but uh, crazy. Anyway, all right, continuing to clean up, letting her cure, and then uh, we'll get back to you. All right, guys, it's been about an hour. I'm showered, and uh, I'm just unbagging it real quick before I head out to lunch. Thought you might want to see how it looks. Okay, I think those are the only places where we have tape that we gotta be concerned with, so um, I'll let it continue to dry before I pop the hood and pull the plastic out, and same thing on the trunk and the doors. But uh, looking pretty sweet. It looks weird seeing the, uh, the logo against a non-multicolor STI, but uh, I think I'm gonna be pretty pleased with it. It is uh, a full day and a half later, and um, so I've been doing a little bit of work here to get the the plastic tabs inside the side molding here. Plastic welded down, I use some plastic weld. JB Weld, so I will have those good to go. By tomorrow I should be able to put that on. And first thing I'm gonna do is wash the car and get rid of all the residue from all the sanding and stuff. Everything that was kind of sealed off and then just kind of rinse it down and then that way we can go ahead and start door panels and windows and starting to put it together. car is washed off. I uh, got all the sanding residue from days past gone so that I can cover stuff up and not just have that hidden under there. Um, 
I'm gonna start with the door seals and putting the doors back together. Got most of the seals in around here and it's just a matter of putting one side in and then rotating it around so the other side engages the rail. What I'm gonna try to do now, I've got most of this in, but this has to come down the window and go down this, uh, this inner rail, but I've got the window off the tracks. So I need to go ahead and get the window back in the, in the tracks before I can install this. Next, let's go ahead and get these uh, door handles put in. So because I just put the window in, I've gotta get the door panel on so that I can raise the window. Good time. shape of this car it's got nice lines we got the uh, got the handle in the one screw right here I'll put the cap on it completing that and I flipped the yellow tabs over inside there and just tightened down that ball exterior trim now we'll go ahead and get the uh, put the mirror on and then we'll be able to put the door panel on the inside of this one and it should be mostly done. Let's put that over that dot and call that good. And that over that dot and call that good. There we go. Okay, one door panel's done. Three more to go. Um, going ahead and getting the handle in here first. Putting them back in is not too bad. Um, you just gotta make sure that you got this is the the hook that goes in the rear and this is the essentially the pivot that goes in the front so you want to make sure that this hook is in far enough so that when you get this lined when you get this lined up you can slide it in this way and that hook engages if it's on the outside because it's too high then it'll it'll still snap this in but this will be on the outside you got to go back get it but down in and then pull forward Still at it guys, putting this thing together. Uh, last night I got three out of the four door panels put together. I'm gonna to put the fourth one on the driver's side and then we'll be up and operating with the windows and everything. Um, still gotta do the adjustment, um, but what I'll probably do is get that fourth door panel put together and then start to work on the uh, hood, the trunk, putting the trim back in those, the scoop, all those kinds of things, the liners, all of that, uh, and the bumpers before I go back to actually aligning stuff. It's very spotty. I washed it um, and a lot of the stuff I was washing off is was sand residue, but I did not want to use any kind of a you know, uh, mist on wax and wipe off or anything like that because this is just pure clear coat at this point and I wanted it to have the opportunity to go ahead and, uh, and kind of continue to outgas. The outer surface of the car just has like a little bit of a matte feeling to it. I will definitely be wet sanding this much sooner than I thought I would. You know, cut and polish it and, and make it look really good and shiny. But right now, let's just get to putting stuff on this thing. I'm excited, man. It's gonna start to look like the STI again, but a blue one. Door panels are in. Now let's go ahead and start putting together the hood and the trunk. After that, we start just snapping on the easy stuff like side skirts and uh, the fender moldings. Making pro oh, and bumpers. Making progress. Time to go ahead and put on the wing. All right guys, I know it's dark, but the wing's looking good. Time to throw the bumper on and see how that looks. Man, that's looking good. So before I put this in there, there's one last piece I gotta do. Um, well, in addition to the jack and the uh, crank and everything that I bought, the tire iron that had been taken out of this at the uh, salvage yard. 
so I got all those to replace them and I got this a new threshold because the other one was all cracked up right here and so huge shout out to Liberty Auto Subaru up in Libertyville Illinois they've been a partial sponsorship and helping us out all the way through um, and it's the little details like this that I go to SubaruPartWholesale.com look it up by my VIN and I can find whatever I want for this car and uh, order it right there online. It's, it's one of the cheapest prices you can get for Subaru parts with cheap delivery and, uh, and it gets there quick. So uh, please look them up, Liberty Auto Subaru in Libertyville, Illinois and SubaruPartWholesale.com, check them out. I just wanna show you how good this looks. Um, yeah, you can see a little bit of red right up there in the creases, but that's gonna get covered up when I put the, the padding on it. The edges, everything is blue. And I mean, it looks like this is a factory paint color. All the edges inside and out are blue. It looks so sweet, including this threshold that's gonna go underneath this piece that we just got here. Like this. It's gonna be covered up, but look at that. If anybody ever pulls it back and tries to look at it, this baby looks fantastic. I can already tell my tail lights are gonna to look too bright. I'm gonna to have to Follow Hoda Hoda STI and get a uh, some smoked lenses from uh, Subi Speed more than likely with the the LEDs. We'll have to check that out. That's a later date, but man, it's starting to look sweet. So good, so good. So speaking of some of the parts that uh, I got from Subaru Part Wholesale, there's a couple things on here that still need to be uh, attended to. And I realized that uh, upon taking it apart this time, that this piece is in fact bent. So I did get a new piece there for the front, as well as the piece that goes across and, and um, holds down and seals the front edge of the bumper. guys it has been a long journey and it's not done yet but we're looking good I got some interior trim I got to do in the back there where I pulled some things out for the window um, but it's curing right now the car is obviously extremely filthy dirty but I'm waiting to wash it for a couple weeks it's been uh, painted it Sunday and it is now um, Thursday so it's only been you know going on almost five days so it's, uh, it's in bad need of a washing. Um, probably gonna road trip it. I have a couple more pieces of trim I'll stick in up here, but, uh, and I'm gonna torque the wheels so that I'm ready to road trip it. But uh, I'm really happy with the fitment of the, uh, the bumper and the hood and the trunk. Everything looks fantastic. The repairs are not uh, professional repairs. They're Fearless Mods repairs by Biff. So. It's uh, for a first time, uh, I learned a lot on the painting. There's a lot I gotta do, some corrections, some wet sanding and some buffing and polishing. I've got those supplies, that'll be coming up next. But uh, what an adventure. I don't know if this was uh, uh, one or two final episodes for you, but thanks for hanging in there. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Uh, I hope it's given you some inspiration just as I was inspired by Goon Squad. They're the ones that showed me that I could do this and if you're going to do it to do it right so door jams insides of doors undersides of hoods and trunk and thing like things like that so uh, do it right it is a blue car through and through and it just has some minor tweaking that still needs to occur but what a night and day difference compared to what the multicolor fearless mods sti was to what it is now all right guys please remember to like and subscribe Pay a visit to SubaruPartWholesale.com and check out our sponsors at Liberty Auto Subaru in Libertyville, Illinois. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you again real soon. Take care.